Welcome. This is the Tennessee End of Courts Algebra 1 practice test number 3. Question number 27. The question says, which graph best represents the equation 2.5x plus 5y equals negative 30? Now, you may notice that this question is in standard form. So there's a couple ways that you can answer it. Uh, the first is to do intercepts method, which is sort of like I'm going to cover up uh, the x value. Basically, I'm finding the x and y intercepts. So if I have 2.5x plus 5y, well, if I lock that y value in to 0, so it's going to be just on the x-axis, um, I can find the, x va the part where it uh, intersects with the x-axis. So I'm going to do 5 times 0 equals negative 30. So what I end up with is 2.5x equals negative 30. So I'm going to divide by 2.5. So I can say that the place in which my x or my line intersects with my x-axis would be at uh, negative 12. And to get the y, I do the exact opposite. So 2.5 times 0 plus 5y equals negative 30. So in this case, I'd be left with 5y equals negative 30. Divide by 5 on both sides. That's supposed to be a 30, not a 36. It just looks weird. So I end up with negative 6. So these are where I intercept, or my intercepts are, where I intersect the line. So x is negative 12, somewhere down in here. Anything that crosses the x-axis up here is wrong. So this is out, and this is out. So what I'm left with is one of these two. I also know that it has to have an intercept with the y-axis at negative 6. So I want to have something like right down in here and something right here. So that is my answer. My answer to number 27 is D. That's using the intercepts method. Now, what happens if I don't want to use the intercepts method? I'd rather do something else. I like slope-intercept form, and I'm going to be dogmatic about it. Uh, by the way, that method sometimes is called like the cover-up method. Like you just cover this one up and solve this, and then for the second one, you just cover the other one up and solve that. It works the same way, uh, but plugging in a zero reminds you what the heck it's all about, I guess. So let's talk about slope-intercept form. I need to convert the, uh, the standard form into slope-intercept, and to do that, I need to get y by itself. Then I can use a graphing calculator if you're really kind of a uh, calculator junkie. So I need to get y by itself. What I'm going to do is use my highlighter for a second to mark it to show me what I don't move, anything else I need to. This is a plus-minus relationship, so to get rid of plus 2.5, I need to subtract 2.5x. This goes away. I bring down 5y here. This, These two numbers are not like terms, so I can't combine them. Minus 30. Then I need to get rid of times 5, and I have to do it to all the terms. So I end up with negative 6 and negative 2.5 divided by 5, which is um, negative 1 half. Sorry, my mic got a little weird there. Uh, so negative 1 half x, and then y. This is a negative 1 half. I'm going to write it out a little nicer down here. I kind of ran out of space with how I zoomed in on this one. Left myself in a, a bit of a problem. So I could either go in and say, okay, it crosses negative 6, and it goes down 1 and over 2. Down 1 and over 2. Or I could go in, and now I can graph it in the old calculator. So for, like I said, the calculator junkies in the crowd. Hit y equals, and I do negative. And you can actually use the fraction menu if you want. If you don't you want to use 0.5, Feel free. I tend to be more of a fraction type, but I don't know. Whatever. That's just what I like to do. It's because I hate how thirds break out, I guess. I hit uh, the graph, and as you can see, it's D. So there's plenty of ways to solve this one and get the correct answer. You choose the one that works best for you and what you can do the most efficiently on test day. Practice that a whole bunch, and uh, you should be ready once the test rolls around.